Well, this is Keith Industrial Group in Clinton, Mass. Doing a runoff video of a 20 horsepower coolant coolers chiller. Uh, today is Thursday, the 17th January 2019. As I said, this is a 20 horsepower chiller made by coolant coolers, otherwise known as Dimplex Thermal Solutions. Model number W02. 25000 2P NF L M 407C serial number 32155. It's got four five horsepower compressors. It's dual circuit refrigeration. In other words, there's two 10 horsepower circuits. It's got R407C refrigerant. I can show you the fluid connections are two inch female pipe. The left is fluid out, and the right is fluid in. There's a couple of um, devices on here that's a flow meter and a ball valve. I'll get to that after, but I just made a, a short loop just to recirculate some fluid. And we'll just do a quick walk around and list some of the components. We have a Got a level gauge there, a drain just below it. And if we come around to this other side here, you'll see our two horsepower compressors, two five horsepower compressors. They're a Sony scroll compressor. And you can see they have crankcase heaters on them. This is an outdoor unit. And those crankcase heaters need to get energized for at least eight hours before you start any refrigeration. You do that by having the power to the unit and the disconnect switch turned on. Some of the other components, your air-cooled condenser coils, your P266 fan speed controls for low ambient, And you've got your brace plate heat exchangers, a positive shutoff solenoid on the liquid line, refrigerant sight glass, thermal expansion valve. That there is a high pressure with a manual reset, a little red rubber dome on the top is where you depress that to reset it. That would go off if you had some kind of issue with some dirty coils or dirty filters or uh, fan motor issues, that kind of thing. Um, there is also, because it's two compressors in a circuit, they have an equalizer tube for the oil level. And it has its own sight glass so that you can see what, what the level is at. On the fluid circuit, we have a 100 gallon reservoir with two pumps. The reason for the two pumps is that you can cycle either one and get some runtime on them. Um, a lot of this is redundant because it's an MRI based unit that they don't want any downtime, so everything's done like twice. Um, thus, the purpose of the two pumps if, if one goes down, you still have a second one that you can stay online. They both draw off of the reservoir and go into a common. There's check valves in that line so that you don't run fluid backwards through the other pump. It's also got a, a, a manually adjustable spring-loaded bypass valve so that you can maintain flow through the exchangers at all times, even if you're not running flow out to your process. Uh, the tank also has a level switch that will prevent the refrigeration from running or the pumps from running if the level is too low. There's also a, an access port there with a vent. We come over to the other side. We have on the return line we have a flow switch twice, one for each circuit, so that you won't run your refrigeration 
if you don't have enough flow going through your exchanges. They also put in a solenoid valve that will go into the closed position when unpowered and prevents any kind of reverse flow. Um, and if we come around to the other side, there's what they call a uh, flow regulator. It's done by Flow Design Inc. And that's supposed to regulate the flow out to the process. It's a little hard to see because it's wrapped in insulation, but it is, you are able to take it apart for cleaning or if you need to replace the spring cartridge or anything like that. Um, these panels on the back side here have to be on for proper airflow. You're drawing air from the opposite side here and sucking the air up through the coils. On this side, you're going to have these washable filters to prevent any dust or dirt from getting into the into the coils. These are a lot easier to clean than it would be if you had the coils. Um, also, we have four fans. Two, like I said, are on speed control for low ambient, and the other two are cycled on and off at full speed as needed. Now, all of this is done with a PLC, a Carroll PLC control that I can show you here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to power this up. We have a, a fuse to disconnect for the power coming into the machine. And I'll power that up. And you'll see our PLC light up and then it wants to start to boot. It does a self test and then, and then boots up. It takes a few seconds. Um, while that's doing that, I can show you there's two transformers. One's a 24 volt control transformer, the other is a, a 110 volt transformer that's designed just to run these two little heaters inside this cabinet in case you're in a, a very cold climate. They have their own thermostats built right in so they go on and off as they need to. Uh, importantly, we have a phase monitor because these are all three phase motors and we have to have the right rotation. That, mo that monitor there will tell you that it is. The green light is on so we, we know what we're good to go. If it was a red light then I would have to swap two of the incoming power leads to change that phasing and then we would probably get the right rotation. <coughs> Excuse me. As our Carroll PLC is booted up, it's reading our, our temperature and telling us that it's off. The other two screens are just monitors for the uh, refrigeration circuits.